Hi, everyone, and welcome to another English lesson with teacher Amy. And this one is a U.S. citizenship lesson. So I'm glad that you've joined me today. This is our agenda. We are going to do introductions. We'll talk about the citizenship test and some updates. Uh, we'll look at some resources for the citizenship test and share those with you. You, and then just do a short lesson about uh, two famous people in American history. Okay, so that is our plan. So a little bit about myself. Um, I worked in adult education for ESL students for over 10 years. I love working with students and helping you guys achieve your language goals. And I do have a cat named Spunky, and I always say you may hear her. Um, on the recording, but she is uh, asleep right now, as most cats sleep during the day. Um, but you may, I never know when she's going to pop in. Okay, so let's get started with our lesson for today. So a little bit about the citizenship test uh, update. And it's also known as the naturalization test. And that it has two components for ESL students. So the first part, we have the civics and then an English test. The English test has not changed at all. So if you have been studying for your citizenship test, that part has not changed. If you are going to be studying, we'll talk a little bit about what that is, um, and what, what you need to know, but that has not changed. Um, the civics part of the test was updated in 2020, and we'll talk about that as well. Okay, so for the English test, you must demonstrate ability um, in speaking, reading, and writing in English, okay? So for the speaking part, a USCIS officer will determine your ability to speak and understand English during your eligibility interview on form N-400, your application for naturalization. So they will ask you questions about that application. You know, what is your name? Where are you from? They'll ask about your family. Um, so that is testing your speaking ability and your ability to understand that information. So I always tell students before you send that in, if you can make a copy, uh, print a copy of it if you do it online. Um, make sure you have your answers to the questions that you can study those and practice that English speaking part. The next part is the reading. So you must read out loud one out of three sentences correctly to determine an ability to read in English. So they will point to a sentence and say, please read number one, and you have to read that to them out loud. If you get it correct, then that's okay, you're finished. If you miss uh, maybe a word or two, they will ask you to read number two. Say, please read number two, and then you will read that. So you just need to read one out of three sentences correctly. And then the last part is the writing part. And you must write one out of three sentences correctly to demonstrate your ability to write in English. And so again, they will tell you, maybe an example, uh, George Washington is the first president of the United States. And so you have to write that sentence correctly. Um, and if you get it incorrect or maybe, you know, spelling is a little off a little, they may give you a second um, sentence to write. So you have three chances for your writing as well. And they have limited vocabulary uh, that you can study for the reading and the writing. And they tell you what those words are um, and I will show you the resources you can use to study for your reading and writing, okay? And then the speaking, like I said, is based on your N-400 
application. So make sure you study that and understand and can answer the questions. Okay, so that is the English test. And if you have been studying for citizenship, that has not changed at all. It is the same. The next part is the civics test. And they updated this in 2020. So with the 2020 version of the civics test, you must study 128 civics questions. They will ask you to answer 20 questions, and then you must answer 12 questions correctly in order to pass the test. Now, this is a little bit different than the previous version, um, but the questions are still, they're all about American government and history, okay? So which civics test will I take? So this is depending on when you filed your application. So if you filed your form before December 1st, 2020, then you will be taking the 2008 version of the civics test. And we'll take a look that, at that one as well. If you filed after on or after December the 1st, 2020, then you will be taking the new version, the 2020 version of the civics test. Okay. okay, so it's very important that you study for the correct test. Otherwise, you will be very confused. Okay, so before December 1st, this is the 2008 version. On or after December 1st, it's the 2020 version. Okay, and just to compare the two, for the 2008 civics test, there are 100 questions. They ask you 10, and you have to get six correct. Okay, and you can see how that's changed. Uh, for the 2020 civics test, you'll study 128 questions, and they are a little bit different. Um, so they added some, they took some away, they changed them. So you will have to study the, the new questions. They ask you 20 of those, and you have to get 12 correct. So you can see the changes that they've made. Uh, and again, make sure you're studying for the correct version of the test, okay? So a little bit about some online study material. I wanted to show you this website. And let me bring it up here. This is the USCIS.gov website. And if you go to the Citizenship Resource Center, let me show you what that looks like. Um, down here, you'll have your topics and you'll wanna click on find study materials and resources. And you'll click on study for the test. Okay, on this page, there is material for the 2008 version of the test. If you are taking the 2020, you'll have to click on this 2020 version. So let's start with looking at the 2008 resources. So it tells you what I just told you about the test. And then it has some study material. And these you can download. They are all free to download. So it has the 100 questions in English. And since this test has been around for a while, they have many translations. So they have Arabic, Chinese, Korean, Spanish, um, Tagalog. And they also have some videos that you can watch. They have the flashcards. They have the audio. You can see here they have English and Spanish. They have some quick lessons, quick civic lessons, and they have um, the Declaration of Independence, pocket size version you can download, and some of these videos that we usually play in class. Uh, but you can watch some of those um, online. And then they have the flashcards for the reading and the writing. 
test as well. They have the list there and the audio, um, the large print, the text up only, I guess there's no audio for this part, but you can print those out and study what you need for those. So this page right here that has a lot of resources is for the 2008 version. Okay, so again, remember that is if you filed before December 1st. If you filed after December 1st, you will be, <clears throat> excuse me, you will be studying the 2020 version of the civics test. Okay, this page here shows you the 2020 version of the civics test. And again, the information that I shared with you. And this one also has some resources. There's not as many translations yet. You just have English and Spanish, but you have your 128 questions and answers. And you also have your flashcards there as well. So if you click the little arrow, there's the flashcards, just the English version right now. They have the pocket study guide there that has all of the questions and answers. And then it also has for the English language study material. Now that has not changed. So what they had on 2008, they also have for 2020. So this is the same. So you have your flashcards um, in your list. And then there's some material there that you can print and study. Okay, so there's a lot of really good resources for you to study on the USCIS.gov website. So you want to make sure you check out the online study material. Make sure you're studying for the correct test, whether 2008 or the 2020 version of the test. So a couple of questions, and this is from the 2020 version. I have two questions here. This is question number 86, and this is about George Washington. So the question is, George Washington is famous for many things. Name one. Okay, so if you can think of one thing George Washington is famous for, they give you some possible correct answers. So these are some of the possible correct answers. He's father of our country. He's the first president of the United States. He's the general of the Continental Army. And he's the president of the Constitutional Convention. Okay, so but you only need one that you will remember. Okay, you don't have to remember all four of these. Um, most students remember he's the first president of the United States. But you can also maybe father of our country is easy for you or any of the other ones listed. Okay, so pick one that is easy to remember and then that would be your answer, okay? Okay, the next one is a similar question, but it is about Thomas Jefferson. Question number 87, this is the 2020 version. Thomas Jefferson is famous for many things. Name one. Okay, so we had George Washington, now we have Thomas Jefferson. And some possible correct answers, if you don't know. Um, he's the writer of the Declaration of Independence. He's the third president of the United States. He doubled the size of the United States with the Louisiana Purchase. He was the first secretary of state and he's the writer of the Virginia statute on religious freedom. So again, you don't have to know all of these, just pick one that is easy for you to remember. So maybe, you know, third president of the United States. Okay, there are two other questions similar. So we had George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. 
There's two more like this, one on James Madison and one on Alexander Hamilton. So famous people in American history that you'll have to know what they're famous for. Okay, so if you are interested in citizenship class, you can register for our live ESL classes. Um, and these are via Zoom. I say live, but they're via Zoom. But your teacher will be there live with you. Um, or you can view more of our recorded lessons on our YouTube channel. So our website is learnesl.pittsburgh.com. And then our Facebook page dot there, dot com there is uh, also Learn ESL Pittsburgh. And then our email address. Please feel free to contact us if you have any questions. If you're interested in any of our classes that we offer, we have beginning, intermediate, we have advanced, we have TOEFL, we have citizenship. We're adding new classes. As we have more students, we will add on more classes. Um, so please email us at learnesl.pittsburgh at gmail.com. Tell us what class you're interested in, and then we will set you up with your first class is always free. Um, so we will set you up with a free class, and then we will uh, talk to you about all that we have to offer. Okay, we would love to hear from you. Um, but until next time, keep practicing your English.